Hey, it's Chris, Leisure of Games. Let's talk MOBAs, but let's do it in a little bit slightly different way than you ever probably have heard before, especially when we talk about them on the tabletop scene. Now, there have been a couple games over the last, you know, two, three years, probably maybe half a dozen, that have done the MOBA-esque thing where you've got your different fighters and your different characters, and you've got your lanes, and you're kind of going at it head-to-head -head and kind of seeing what happens, right? Well... The problem with those games is that there's a lot of overhead and then there's a lot of mechanics that you have to learn and nuances and then you've got all the asymmetry between all of the different characters and there's just almost too much going on at once. Now what if you could distill that into a card game and just play it very easily? Well that's why I'm talking about Sky Tier Horde today. Sky Tier Games sent me a preview copy and they said hey take a look at it for us. So. Five things that I think you should need to know if you are considering whether or not this is right for you. I've had hands-on experience. Let's talk. Point number one. Frankly speaking, it compares itself to other ease of access games on the digital side of things, especially like Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering or Keyforge. Well, I'll tell you right now, one of the main points of this game, one of the nice things compared to the MOBA side of things is the ease of of access. What I'm holding right here in each hand is a pre-constructed deck of various colors, you know, one for each, that you just can go with. And it sort of reminds you a little bit of more of the Keyforge where you just have this set designated deck and you can just play it out and try and optimize to the best of your ability. Now it's really nice because, again, the overhead on this game is relatively low. So it's not going to make you like brain burn. You know, everybody has that sweet spot for that game that is, you know, a little bit more complex and a little bit more thinky and AP and learning curve a little bit higher. But you know what? It's nice not to have a game that is like Android Netrunner every single time you pull it out so you have to relearn it, right? And so the fact that they have gone this route is just, frankly speaking, kind of nice. I just pull it out and I shuffle it up and I just draw and play. The iconography is relatively easy. The setup is fast. And it just works well from that standpoint. Point number two. Now, this is not my typical game. I don't do a lot on the one to two player side of things. This is not a game where I would have gone, you know what? Send me a solo player game. I didn't realize that this was solo mainly until after they sent it to me. I sat down and looked at it and I said, whoa, okay. But you know what? If you are a solo gamer, this is something that you should be looking at. Because like I just said with point one... This is really, really easy to get to the table and play. Really, really works well from that standpoint. You don't have a lot to remember, so it's easy, but every game is going to be slightly different because of the decks being asymmetric, because the bad guys you're going up against are going to be different, and the outsiders, the boss monsters, if you will, offer you a different aesthetic or thematic approach at the end of every single game. It works well from a solo side of things, and I think that's a little bit ingenious because now I think we're seeing the solo side of things, especially on crowdfunding, really start to reach more of a peak. And I say that as a positive. More games are being designed as solo first as opposed to adding solo on. And I can tell right from the get-go, even as a non-solo person, this has been designed as a solo first game with a two-player option as well. So if you are interested in that, you should be interested. Point three. Refreshing mechanics. I pulled this out, and as you may think on point two, the pre-constructed deck, and the minions, and the bosses, and how are you going to do the lane thing, and is that really going to work? It kind of does. And I'll tie it in with point four in a second here, but how the minions interact between whether or not you choose to engage them, or choose to do a sort of roll of the dice, if you will, and I'll explain that in a second, or you just go for the all-out slaughter and don't even try and engage people while risking it. And that goes straight into point four because this game has a little bit of high risk, high reward. This is not necessarily a game for the patient, but it is a game for the cunning. Because if you're choosing to put your guys out there in lanes that engage enemies, well, you risk losing those guys, you know, rather quickly. Engaging minions, you can lose them rather quickly. But if you don't engage them, it's a deck burn, meaning if they burn through all your deck, you lose. So there is a definitive timetable because almost every turn minions are going to be coming out and how you choose to mitigate your enemies on the battlefield versus the minions that are in reserve that are going to sort of pick you off by attrition if you're not careful. Again, how you choose to do it really does matter. 
And the lane thing is nice. You get to just pick. It's not like you have to pit here, you have to put there. They give you the option. How do you want to strategize your game based on how you're getting your cards? And again, something I haven't really seen, but is a definite uh, strategy mechanic, is you only draw cards when you beat a bad guy. So you have to be very, very careful about when you're choosing to beat guys and when you're going to be able to get more cards, because otherwise, you could very well find yourself SOL very quickly. Point five is the only one that I'm sort of I don't know much about. Now, obviously, I have a couple decks here. I have a couple castles that you're defending. I have a couple sets of outsider big boss guys, and I have a set of enemy cards and enemy decks. Now, I'm assuming that there is going to be more offered on the Kickstarter, on the campaign, than what I have been given here. And if that's the case, then again, it probably depends on price point because. Again, this is relatively nice in terms of getting to the table. It's not using completely new mechanics on some of the actual cards. I mean, if you're familiar with the basic Magic the Gathering, you've got your offense, you've got your health, and there's not really a whole lot of defense. It's just, I do damage to you, you do damage to me. You get a plus one here, a minus one there. Trample here, stun there. You know, it's basic, but sort of like the similarly uh, basic card game mind bug from two months ago on crowdfunding. I do not mean basic as an insult. I mean it as a genuine compliment that it takes concepts that you are already familiar of with this side of things and twists them in a slightly imaginative way so that you don't have to relearn a new concept, but you can relearn it in a new way. So all in all, what do I think of this? I think this game is going to really appeal to solo players looking for a card game that's easy to get to the table. Is this going to be an end-all, meets-all, the most innovative thing you've ever seen in a one- or two-player, even cooperative side of things? No, it's not. But does it capture the MOBA-esque doing the lanes, especially as a solo game, that if you had said, I could play a MOBA card game as a solo person before this, I would have been you know, a little bit skeptical. Is it right for me? I don't know right now. Because I'm not primarily a solo player, so it's kind of hard for me to judge. A lot of the time, I get my solo play in order to learn the game, to play it, and teach it to other people. So really, what it comes down to is, I think this is going to be a very, very solid solo game for those that are looking for something along those lines when you don't have another partner to play with in terms of your Hearthstone, your Magic the Gathering. You don't want to pay a bunch of money to win or to get in, and you want to have a little bit of variability. It reminds me a little bit almost of like a Marvel United, if you will, only as a card game that's just low overhead going to appeal to more people, especially from the solo side of things, and still offer you a challenge with a relatively luck-based system just by the fact that it's a deck and you're having to draw cards and mitigate and you're going to lose some by burn and you're going to have to adapt your strategy while knowing what's in your deck in the first place but also not having to create your deck and that's i guess the other thing i didn't talk about here is i don't know if they're going to be adding options to sort of modify your deck or not i don't know so that would be another interesting aspect uh but i almost hope they don't because it, it part of me says you know it's nice not to have to think about that and I worry about balance then in those cases where you've just got this pre-constructed deck and you can just on the table and go. So, there you go. Sky to your horde. Check it out. If you're interested, let me know if you have any questions or concerns. And I believe they're going to have an early backer. So if you're watching this in time, uh, you can get the early bird for whatever they're offering. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. Let me know in the comments section. I'll see you around.